Welcome back and let's talk about Lime. And Lime is one of the well-known um, interpretation, local interpretation methods actually. In this video, um, we're talking first to have an understanding of the motivation for Lime and then we also develop the mathematical intuition actually. You will see the outline and there are some further videos actually where we deep a bit deeper into it and discussing more details about that. So let's get started. What does LIME actually stand for? It stands for Local Interpreter Model Agnostic Explanations. That's simply LIME. Uh, LIME assumes that even if a machine learning model is very complex, the local prediction can be described with a simpler model. And local really means, again, we have an input um, and around that, so in the neighborhood of that input, saying, yep, yeah, why not using a very simple model there? So Lime explains the predictions of any black box model by approximating the model locally with an interpretable model. So, and these kind of local interpretable models then are called local surrogate models, or what we're doing again is you'd like to imitate actually the original black box model, the machine learning model we'd like to explain. And here's the, the Important insight is really using the or training the surrogate model locally and using one of these interpretive models, such as linear models or classification regression trees and so on, right? Something where um, a lay person can easily not understand these. So, now I should answer why a machine learning model predicted our label y hat for a given input x, right? The nice thing about Lime is, and that's the reason of why it's so famous, it's model agnostic. You can apply it to any kind of model, even to deep new networks. And since you can apply it to anything, you can also do that for any kind of data. You can do it for tableau data, image data, text data. Um, we only have to check, and we discuss the data a bit more detail, how we actually define the local neighborhood, right? So uh, let's start with the definition of what actually Lime is doing. So Lime provides a local explanation, as I said, for a black box model, let's call that F hat. Um, and we do that by generating a new machine learning model, and that new one, let's call that G hat, right? Um, G hat has a certain class of potential interpretable models, as I said, like linear models, like tree-based models, and so on. G um, should have two characteristics, actually. It should be interpretable, Right, it should be so um, very easy to understand the relation between the input variables and the responses to the predictions. And of course, as always, it should be faithful, but not over the entire actually model, but locally faithful. Um, so more saying that it should have a similar behavior as the original model F had in the vicinity, so neighborhood observation X being predicted. So formally you want to receive a model G hat with minimal complexity in a way that's interpretable, understandable, and so on, and maximal local fidelity, right? So um, let's talk about a bit more G hat and complexity measures. Of course, we could say, yeah, let's use a linear model. Um, linear model simply really means, as always, our weight theta transpose times our input beta x. Um, and then applying some kind of transformation S on that. S could be, for example, the identity function simply for a linear regression, or if we're talking about logistic sigmoid function, then of course, then we would end up having a logistic regression model. Um, if we're now talking about complexity measure J, that could be in that case, simply how many features do we actually use? So how many of the weights are actually non-zero? So, of course, if we'd like to minimize complexity, we'd like to use only a few of our input feature, features and therefore only having a few of our thetas which are not set to zero. And we could do more of the same thing with trees, um, saying now we have a definition of how to build trees, right? And then J could be simply measure the number of terminal leaf.
Now let's talk a bit about the, the other part, the um, local fidelity, so it should be locally faithful, right? Um, of course, always local faithful to f hat with respect to x, right? So we always say it's local explanations. We talk about y, one very specific input vector or tensor x. And now we're saying we have some z's which are close actually. So they are in some space, could be anything, but there should be something which is close to where x is living actually. And also in, a, um, in addition to that, predictions of g hat of z should be close to the original predictions, right? So we would like still to mimic the original model, but only for all the points which are really close to original point. Um, so the optimization task can also say the closer z is to x, the closer our model prediction should be also to each other. Um, so there are two required measures. For, uh, first of all, the proximity, similarity, or neighborhood measure, you can, or distance measure, whatever you would like to call that, right? I'd say um, that's our phi function here. And phi is always for, for this subscript x, right? That's really for, for fixed input vector. Uh, and now we'd like simply to define it with respect to z. And for example, if we have continuous feature space, we can simply use something like an exponential kernel, saying, okay, what, what's the difference, uh, the distance between x and z, um, squaring that, and then using divide by some kernel width, and then taking the exponential of that. Um, the, so if you have numeric features, we can simply use the Euclidean distance here, or if we have a mixed fixture space, there's also a Goa distance, um, which simply extends the idea then simply to different kind of feature types. The other thing we of course now need to, to say is not only in the original feature space, but also in the prediction space, we need more something like a loss function saying how similar is actually the prediction um, of our original model and the new model, so f hat and g hat. And we could, for example, use something like a two loss, a squared error, simply subtracting uh, the prediction from each of them and squaring these, right? Quite, quite standard. So, um, so given in new, um, given these points z, um, and we can now try to measure the local fidelity of a model with respect to f hat in terms of weighted loss, um, simply saying, yep, yeah, we have the, um, the distance from x to z actually as the weight, right? And as I simply as we defined it above here, for example. And then we, what we're going to weight is actually the loss, right? So if we are further away, we don't really care about if the, um, if the predictions don't agree to each other, if they're very close to each other, x and z, then of course the loss should be very small. And if we're doing over some, uh, summing over different kind of z's. Um, so the optimi uh, optimization objective of Lime, so is more saying, yeah, we would like to minimize that kind of loss we had over here, right? That's the same loss as we have now here on the slide. And we would also like to minimize the complexity as we discussed before. In practice, what is actually happening is that Lime is only optimizing the model, uh, model fidelity and is not optimizing the complexity directly but simply saying here, yeah, the user can decide on the model complexity beforehand, right? Simply limiting the uh, model class and what is possible for G, uh, and then we don't need that anymore. So the goal is to have a model agnostic explainer. Um, so we optimize our local fidelity without making any assumption about the original model F hat. And so only G hat will try to approximate that. So here's the algorithmic outline, actually. As an input, we have, of course, our original model f hat. We have the given observation, could be a vector, tensor, image, or not. And we have the predictions to that, of course. Um, so now we would like to have also as an input given by the user, the model class G. Could be, for example, again, linear model, free race model, and so on. And now what we're simply doing is we set a new points z from our space. We retrieve predictions 
uh, from the original model for the obtained points. So we're taking the points from there, right? And now asking simply our model. We now computing the proximity, so how close they are to original x to get more of our weights. Um, then we train an interpretable surrogate model, G, on weighted data points, right? So simply saying, yeah, we have all these data points from here, but now saying some of them are more important than others. And the labels for training come simply from F hat, right? And then we turn the interpreted model G hat as the explainer. So let's do it a bit more concretely uh, and illustrate it a bit. Let's say we would like to do that for classification, tabular data. We have two classes, plus one, and let's say, I don't know, zero or minus one. Um, we have that kind of model already here. So here we see the decision boundary. And what we would like to explain is that kind of dot over here. Why was it now predicted to be plus one and not zero, right? What we also assume is that our class of, logistic, um, of possible models is the logistic equation models. So it's something which we can understand. So first part was sampling actually from our space um, to get these, so possible points. Um, and this can be done in different kind of ways. Um, we could, of course, simply randomly sample like we see here. We could we have an equidistant grid like there. Um, depends always a bit on your data, on your model and so on. You have to be thinking about it how you would like to sample these. Then we what, what we're doing from all these points, let's say we have used the random points, we're computing now the proximity, so the how close they are actually to that original point, right? We're seeing these, these are much more closer, therefore they have larger dots, they have larger weight than something like that over here, which is more unimportant. Same goes here, that's important, that's unimportant, right? Um, now, using this kind of data we have by using, of course, now f hat to get the labels for all these points in here, uh, we can train now this logistic regression model, which is very nice because we see now it's, it's linear and around that point over here, it's doing a pretty good job, right? So we see that over there also the original model is fairly linear, it follows the same trend. We're seeing now better why our point the yellow point was classified now as the darker gray area. 